interacted. So my name is uh, Dr. Vinayak Pachkavade. I hold a PhD uh, from the University of Liège in Belgium with the specialization in the electronics uh, sensors, ultra precise sensors and some circuits. Before that, I have also obtained my MS from uh, National Ching University in Taiwan. These universities uh, uh, for my PhD and the MS, they are the widely recognized uh, top universities in the world for their programs. I'm also a senior member of IEEE, uh, a member of IEEE Instrumentations and Measurement Society. And I'm a founder and director of uh, my consulting firm, V. Pachkavade. You can see in the bottom, uh, that's the website address of my business firm. Currently, I'm consulting with uh, many clients and one of them is uh, Takshila VLSI for this particular uh, course. Uh, you can also visit, uh, just type my name in the Google search and you will see all my background uh, expertise and experiences so far. Uh, you also can have access to my profile on LinkedIn. There you can see my experiences and expertise in uh, a particular domains. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, take some notes while I am teaching you uh, because that would help uh, to uh, when the class is over you can go back home and when you revise the concepts uh, right and uh, I have to share with you I was also a faculty member with Vishweshwariya National Institute of Technology VNIT in Nagpur and uh, I was also a teaching associate at the University of Liège in Belgium teaching the grad students the microelectronic course so that was uh, my experience uh, I have about 20 years of uh, experience in uh, consulting, R&D, uh, teaching higher education and the industry as well. Uh, regarding the course uh, specific experience, I have a direct experience with the tape out of integrated circuits with the top foundries like uh, TSMC and UMC where I have taped out uh, some analog uh, integrated circuits and also some sensors using the foundry uh, technology uh, nodes. Okay, so I move ahead. All right, so this left side figure, I just continue with that, is the microchip photograph. And that is the Intel microprocessor 4004. I am sure many of you, when you introduce me for today's class, many of you have, are freshers and uh, have an electronics background in your undergrads and the graduate studies. And there, you must have heard about the microprocessor that you have studied. Can anybody name me, tell me, can you recall what was the microprocessor chip number? A086. That's true, correct. And anyone else? So it was 8086, that's fine. And before that was 4004. So it depends how many bits that microprocessor was capable capable of. So 4004 Intel microprocessor, it was introduced in about 1970. On the okay. So this is the first uh, left side diagram. You can see that that's the microchip, a micrograph or micro view of a 4004 Intel microprocessor that was introduced and fabricated in 1970. I am going you a first a detailed broad view of this uh, with the continuation of yesterday's class. So it says that the right side is the graph. It says that at 1970 we had the introduction of 4004 microprocessor and this says about 1000 to 10,000. So let's say here we are at the 5000 transistors we are used to construct and introduce and build inside this chip few digital functions. So we all of know, you might want to recall from your previous experience and studies that microprocessor is a collection of arithmetic logic units, counters, 
Shift registers. Can you tell again? What are the other flip words? Flop. Memory. Flip flop. Yeah, flip flop is all basically they are used to form the memory and the arithmetic logic units and the registers and and so on and so forth, right? So, Stack. Yeah, yeah, correct. So about five thousand transistors were used to fabricate to put together. They are all integrated. That's why we call it as an integrated circuit. Sir, is that you know four four thousand four zero zero four refers to that four zero zero four transistors? Sorry, what again? That four zero zero four. That means in this chip there are four zero zero four transistors. No, four zero zero four is the name of that chip. Like why? What is the you know reason behind that? That, that is the number. Chip? That is the company's na. strategy 8008 is another chip 8080 it depends on what how many bits of that microprocessor is how many data bus address bus and based on that they define it and if you go upwards i hope you are able to see my notations annotations here we are now yes. talking about pentiums and core to quad and all these things so it depends on like how many partitions are there how many processors are there so the company names it okay okay ha huh. so 4004 has about 5000 transistors that were put together as you can see in the left diagram and using them logic functions were created and then you can see here these wires can anybody tell me what these wires are maybe input output like you know vss ground that's correct that's correct and but what these wires are they are called wire bonds so when you actually go into the company to actually work in the uh, semiconductor firms doesn't matter which kind of company is that you should know these names wire bonds what is packaging and all that so this micrograph can anybody tell me how to have access to such micrograph if i ask you to go to market and bid uh, buy one 8086 microprocessor chip or micro processor 8085 you can get it in few bucks and can that chip is looking like this no no uh, it's not necessary i mean depending on the packaging like That's if it's right. dual gen line package yeah uh, comes yeah. in that varieties correct 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 so when we see that when we we all already know how that chip will look like it has a packaging and outside we have a pin so we can put it into the pcb or breadboard to create some circuit design right the discrete level but if you open somehow manage to open the package and then that chip you take under the microscope maybe inside the clean room then you can see such graphs where you can actually zoom in to a particular portion here you can see the arithmetic logic units here you can see the registers are placed here you can see the memory is placed and this is how all functions are placed at some particular area they are interconnected through the metals as we explained a bit yesterday and then there is a for the outer world connections we have these wire bonds so there is actually they what the, the chip fabrications and designers do they are actually the pads pads is basically a facility to connect the inside connection of chips to the outside through these wire bonds okay to have the access to the inputs and outputs the pads are there on and on top of the pads this this you can see these squares little squares here they are nothing but pads and on top of those pads these wire bonds are connected okay and this outside of one end of this wire bond is connected to the pad and other end of this wire bond is connected to the pin that we see from the outside when we buy the chip we see the pin the metal pin outside right so this is up so the right graph shows us as we go ahead now it is only showing 2005 and we are in 2022 so what we can understand is that for the 1970 this was the first microprocessor introduced by intel contained 5000 transistor after that in 1990 let's say we had this intel 486 or pentium we heard this name pentium there 
we see the transistor density is more than 1 lakh and now you often see your laptop there must be one sticker just now on my laptop keypad i see intel inside core i7 if you are using amd computer or some other computer or laptop you must be having some sticker labeled on that so it says that what is the name of this processor and what is the performance of that so we are talking about core 2 core 2 quad core 2 do or intel inside core i7 so that shows the highest possible performance available today and that processor means this graph is showing the transistor count that is integrated inside the same chip area the chip area more or less remains the same then what is the advantage the ability of today's technology to pack more and more transistors in a given chip area we are not seeing that if we are migrating from 1970 to 2020 the chip size what let's say it was 100 micrometer here by 100 micrometer both length and height so today area would also be more or less same or maybe little higher but as compared to 5000 transistor now we are able to pack more than 1 billion of transistors can you imagine this one so that's the power of technology today so this slide shows you that overview right you have any question you can ask me uh, feel free to interrupt otherwise i move to next slide no is it you know core 2 is it referred to something particularly or just an in intel name that's they are all intel processors okay okay yeah okay sir. okay okay so i now go to the next slide oh sir i have a question yeah please uh, was the first processor designed on the, uh, using the hand paper method or uh, i mean in the 1970s ed industry did not exist at that time or it was available since the first design of the microprocessor i am not sure if you have heard the name of a engineer jack skilby he was working with the semiconductor giant company i am sure you know the name of the company now the name of the company is Texas Instruments. Have you heard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's there in India also, Bangalore. So Jack Skilby was an engineer. He was working in that company. And he is the inventor of the term integrated circuits, where he actually, by means of some basic photolithography technique, Photolithography, we are also going to learn that in detail. Because when you are doing a PD course, and if you join some company, you should know how the transistor works and how the fabrication takes place. Otherwise, I am going to explain in few of the next slides. No, merely knowing the EDA tools will not take you up ladder into the corporate career. Okay. So, I myself is scientist. So, I will always prefer to teach you the fundamentals and the principles so that you can easily apply in your laboratory exercises okay so jack skilby was an engineer he actually coined the integrated circuits he pioneered that technology he invented that and from that the wave came of from discrete in electronics to the integrated electronics and thereafter intel came in about with the very first uh, processor that is 4004 Intel per microprocessor and then some other corporate companies Fairchild semiconductors and uh, many other they also jumped into the competition and that's how the race began have you heard Moore's law yes sir yeah in the semiconductor technology Dr. Moore's predicted that the number of transistors in a microchip will double almost double for every two years so it means in 1970 if the transistor contained 5000 transistor if the chip contained 
then the next version after two years of the chip will contain more than 10,000 transistors and so on the process will go on so if you see this graph we can see this 1970 roughly and we are into 2020 now so the transistor count was about 5000 1000 to 5000 and now we are talking about more than 1 billion transistors so this is the power of a technology that people have actually uh, leveraged more than 1 billion transistors are there so what it means okay we are going to pack more transistor in a given area it means the cost will come down any single advantage that you see what, what is the advantage of it in, a in given small area, area we can you know we can uh, integrate more transistors yeah so what yeah. is the advantage so in the small area it's so a area we are using the same so we are using in more transistor means we can speed up the processor or processor plan. So speed will, you know, technology speed will increase. And can anybody guess or tell me uh, how you are able to pack? This Let's technology say. keep on reducing. Earlier it was, you know, 32 nanometer, and then reduced to 20. Now it is, you know, reducing to 6 nanometer, 3 nanometer. That's correct. So that's, that's correct. That's correct. So yesterday we covered this topic, right? So because now the, the that's called scaling, technology scaling. So transistors are getting smaller, and that's why we are able to pack more and more transistor in a given area. So the ultimate advantage is batch fabrication. Batch fabrication is a term where the transistors are fabricated through the typical fabrication processes in the foundry clean room and that's how we are getting the cost advantage what about the but okay so we packed 1 million transistors in a given area okay the cost let's say we had a one dollar for one chip now we have like 50 cents or 10 cents for the same chip but let's say we have more transistors now 1 billion transistors in just a 50 cent or microprocessor I think 50 cents right yeah so can tell me like uh, with this uh, low cost what, what is are we get, getting some more advantages uh, did you get my point yeah so yeah so we we have a like uh, like like say 20 years ago i had to pay 10 dollar for the chip and it was like 5000 transi uh, transistor for that 4004 or 8086 microprocessor now i can buy a little uh, same size uh, microprocessor but it is let's say intel core i7 now because my laptop for keypad shows that my laptop doesn't contain 8086 microprocessor it contains core i7 so advantage is what is the advantage of course the cost went uh, slow because yeah. now i am getting the same chip and in 50 cents and then i assembles those chips into my laptop and the taiwan companies or china companies uh, sell that uh, laptop as a product or iphone as a product and inside them there is a processor advantage is speed because that's how we are going to the market to buy a laptop right when we go for a buying a laptop in the market what are we looking for how yeah, fast speed actually has already mentioned speed so i didn't you know uh, mention it again. yeah so the clock frequency in the pd in the context of the course we are learning we will not talk about because when we talk about speed we are just thinking uh, from the customer point of view as if we are going to buy the laptop and all but let's say as an engineer or uh, technician point of view clock frequency it means how fast the transistor inside which are going to act and realize the digital functions inside the chip digital functions could be microprocessor memories and some other logic functions they have been integrated together their clock frequencies how fast they are able to switch and perform a specific operation right for instance i am making this zoom presentations my processor inside the laptop is running so the time it is taking to process and perform particular action inside the laptop that is quite fast and i am seeing that in terms of the quality i am getting okay so this is how so we move to the next slide now
so is that you know clock frequency directly di directly proportional to the transistor size clock frequency is uh, proportional to the uh, transistor size yes there yeah. is a equation there is a equation related to that because when you will shrink the transistor as i explained yesterday in one of the slides i'm not yeah, sure channel, yeah. channel width will decrease and yeah that channel length will... we are going to cover that yes channel length so these fundamentals when you have a strong hold on such fundamentals and then you go to do perform some job into the company you will definitely have a upper hand you know so okay so clock frequencies definitely are increasing because of shrinking scaling all okay. right so we go to the next slide now so power concern we talk about scaling we talk about cost and we talk about the clock frequency okay we cost got down the clock frequencies got higher up and these two advantages came because of the scaling we talk about yesterday and we talk about that today as well what about the power power it means now we again the first point here says when we are buying computer or iphone or any other electronic gadgets it has a processor certainly so how fast the laptop is we will also look at that how fast my iphone will use some apps we will talk about this and accordingly we will choose which laptop or iphone to be bought or mobile to be bought but that is not the only factor nowadays another is the performance it means how fast the computer is working that is again good thing which is linked to the clock but how good the applications are run it means is my computer or mobile phone getting heated up while performing so many operations if i am using powerpoint i am using zoom i am uh, using google browsers same with laptop or mobile are those functionalities i am running those apps okay my computer is fast so clock is fast in technical term and i am getting those things work so fastly but is my computer or mobile is heating up with that so it is power so that is also become dominant factor in today's technology so there is always a trade off so the first point is about that so the performance will be also given by number of functions we are performing uh, rather than only by the clock we just not only want the speed but we also want the performance so it means we also want the less power so what we see here from the technical point of view let's say individual cmos transistor that is inside the chip it will act as a switch will it act as an amplifier no for the pd course we are focusing to use cmos as a transistor as a switches yesterday also we talked about that we are so sorry to interrupt i think we are getting echo from shweta shweta could you please uh, ah okay It's a sorry to interrupt this kind of. Yeah, shall I continue? Sure. Okay, so I go ahead. So let's say 1970, uh, we talk about 404004, or let's say 8086. It had about 10,000 transistors, and so it consumed some energy. So there was a power consumption. You know how the CMOS or uh, transistor inside the chip consumes energy. It means does it consume any energy first that is the question of course if a particular semiconductor is performing some function it's acting as a switch or it's acting as an amplifier or any other function like yesterday we saw cmos inverter so it will consume some amount of energy we call it as a power yeah. consumption right so yes, if let's say now we have 1 billion transistors so the power consumption will increase along with the speed or not one chip has 10000 transistors suppose they increase it supposedly increase right it will definitely yeah. because the switching actions although so no matter how small power it consumes let's say one transistor is consuming some amount of power 
and that is negligible but now in the same area i am packing 1 million transistors and they are all switches so obviously that little power multiplied by 1 billion transistor power consumption of each transistor power consumption of 1 billion transistor at the same time will be enormous power consumption so that's why nowadays just by shrinking technology scaling we are able to pack more and more transistor because cost is very low and more functionality high performance high clock speed and better performance but the big challenge is power consumption is also going up but engineers and material scientists are also fast they are coming with innovations to keep the power consumption to a reasonable level so that also we will talk in this course when you let's say design your own chip you will be challenged for designing that particular logic function to be a low power is called as ip development of physical design intellectual property ip stands for intellectual property so okay tell me now uh, if the mos transistor we saw yesterday we we saw that how it turns on and how it turns off so ideally when the transistor is on it will consume some power right because there is flow of charged carriers charged carriers are electrons as well as holes when it is off it means there is a absence of charged carriers and we don't have and we say the transistor is off but with the cmos vlsi even when the transistor is off and ideally we can declare my microprocessor inside the laptop is not performing any function so it is the chip is not on the transistor inside 1 million transistor they are not working because they are not performing some operation inside the laptop so they are off but still they will consume a power that is called as that comes that power consumption although very little in the nanowatt or picowatt that comes from the special term called as leakage current in cmos we are going to cover this topic we'll see where this leakage comes from and how this fabrication technology or design technology optimize that okay so let's say i have a 10000 transistor or 5000 transistor and even if my chip is not working performing any function it means i assume my transistors are off 5000 transistor are off but i just declared they will have a power consumption by means of some leakage so i won't mind because just 5000 and collective leakage current let's say it's nanowatt multiplied by 5000 so i don't compare i don't uh, I'm not concerned about that much power consumption. I'm okay with that. But what if now my chip has 1 billion transistors and they are all off, but power consumption due to their leakage is enormous. So I must take care of that. So that is a concern. So next slide you can see now. Sir, uh, could you please you know repeat that tough point, second point? On this slide? Yes. Yeah, are you taking all of you? Are you? I will encourage you to take some notes also. Are you taking that? Yes, sir. I'm taking. I missed that uh, second. Part. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it says the presently the performance is driven by number of cores on a chip rather than by a clock. It means you have in a in a given. Have you heard the system on chip? This term S O C. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. System Actually, I, I worked in you know, Qualcomm for three and a half years as a uh, person control admin, so there I heard all this. Right, right. So system on chip, it means I have, let's say I have, uh, my company says, uh, we are a team of 10 people and they say we got the big project from the American company to this Indian company. Okay and the target is we have to design a chip for wireless communication or let's say optical communication or let's say iot 
internet of things so it means they have a broad system level specification they give that like we need this optical fiber bandwidth this much power consumption this much this we have this transmission antenna specification and accordingly the architecture of the chip which will be plugged into that particular product in wireless technology the architecture will be defined so inside that chip what is that architecture it means i have a blank box and inside i will put functions one function that called as that those functions are called as core as written here number of cores so that particular soc that my company is going to design contains microprocessor memories some function some cores for the data transmission some functions of analog blocks some functions of mix signal box so there are these separate blocks are called as cores these cores are put inside a chip that is called soc so i am not having a logic on a chip rather i am having the whole system on a chip rather i would say whole laptop now you can see inside the laptop i have microprocessor memories and so many other chips if you open up the laptop but what if i want to put whole laptop inside the chip is it possible yes so that that particular chip i called it as a system on chip and inside the number of cores means how many functions i am able to integrate in that particular chip it has microprocessor it has memories it has data bus chips it has analog chips analog functions so they are called as cores okay okay hmm. so you now see this is the slide that we i am going to take you so 4004 had a feature size feature size is what what is the meaning of feature size this term will be asked during the interview also can be asked during the interview also can anybody tell me narendra i think you will tell um, any anybody else would also like to at least guess what is the feature size feature size is nothing but transistor size that we are talking about inside a chip so it feature size of 10 micrometer in 1971 1971 that microprocessor had about 5000 transistors and each transistor size was 10 micrometer so it's a physical size and if you ask me sir tell us in more detail again from the physics level at the physics level then i would say very precisely the 10 micrometer is actually the channel size or the distance between the source and the drain yesterday those who attended the class they can see that visualize that image it will come forward again okay so 10 micrometer and now the core 2 do has a feature size of 45 nanometer in 2008 So, if for example, in 2008 you bought your laptops from Dell or Lenovo or Acer, these are the brands. And what they do? They buy the Intel processors, and then they put inside these laptops. Then they pack these laptops and put them into the market for us customers like us to go to the shop and buy it. Right? So, if I am buying it in 2008, I am sure my laptop. our computer will have core 2 do and it has a technology of 45 nanometer feature size of course when we go as a customer into the shop will not be able to get this uh, information they'll not write somewhere that feature size of 40 they'll just write core 2 do that's how the customer will understand but vlsi engineer can relate to this term feature size of 45 nanometer it means the transistor size was 45 nanometer and today right now i am teaching you and i my laptop keyboard has this sticker intel inside core i7 so i need to google as a vlsi engineer what i would do i will google intel core i7 what is the feature size of this so i should be able to get an answer maybe i will give you as a just a little task just google your own laptop 
and see what processor it has and ask Google to give you a number what is the feature size I'm sure it could be about uh, 45 22 nowadays modern laptops even smaller okay so that's it uh, iPhone 14 for example this is a quite uh, surprising uh, quite uh, interesting to figure out can maybe the next class can somebody tell me iPhone 14 has been launched uh, the processor they have the iPhone 14 got famous because of its camera 48 megapixel that's another technology but again physical design is there is the primary part of this camera chip what is that chip can anybody tell me name of that chip a14 I'm not sure about CMOS image sensors. Oh, sorry. CMOS image sensors is a CMOS technology again, an image sensor. So it's again a chip where CMOS transistors have been integrated and such a fascinating technology they have. Even my phone is Huawei in my hand as of 16 megapixel or 14 megapixel when I had bought it a uh, few years ago and now <laughs> 48 megapixel camera iPhone 14 that is how it is famous um, and uh, but the task for you is figure out what is the processor clock tell me next time the clock frequency of that and tell me uh, the feature size if you could find out okay so uh, so what manufacturers how they are able to do it is again the innovation and the patented technology Intel all American giants all Chinese giants even Huawei is a Chinese giant so they are also quite aggressive in the innovation so what they are doing is these manufacturers the foundries they are introducing a new processes every two or three years again why because some self prophecy was done by Dr. Moore from Intel in 1970 that number of transistor in a microchip will double every two years so nobody has been able to challenge this law so far few years ago I heard when I was tracking the news and I was tracking the technology and the science scientists came with the hands up and they declared Moore's law is gonna fail no possibility we cannot scale more so the question popped up right here on the top of my powerpoint can a transistor be smaller than an atom what is the size of an atom anybody 10 into 10 power radius, minus 20 radius of an atom anyone guess it cannot be a you know transistor cannot be a smaller than atom that I can you know I can uh, why say because uh, uh, see trans you know uh, anyway see transistor are made up of uh, silicon or uh, semiconductor semiconductor example silicon so silicon so all these you know operations are as uh, happening because of valence electron so in an atom so transistor we can so for, for, for single tran, tran, you know so the complete transistor we cannot make smaller than atom that is what I I believe yeah anyways um, for out of your curiosity you can find that answer again uh, just a little task for you even if you don't want to find the answer that's fine but yes it cannot be smaller than an atom because atom has a radius of about 0.1 nanometer 100 picometer and technology node that we are at is about 1 nanometer or 2 nanometer and it is uh, but that is from for very selected products very selected chips the conventional flow is restricted about 22 nanometer, 44, 65, 90, likewise. Only, only few products have this very ultra pushing technology like 10 nanometer and all. Not all this. Okay. So poor Dio had this. So they are shrinking the size and they are able to introduce new process with the innovation. 
with the 30 percent approximately 30 percent smaller feature size and with that they are able to pack twice as many transistors in the same area so the size remains same of the chip but the transistor size are 30 percent smaller than this previous technology node so pack more and more and just like in a single box we are packing more and more atoms okay but with that comes a challenge as i said before with packing more and more transistors let's say 1 billion transistor transistor leakage is a concern even it's off 1 billion transistors are not performing any function they are off but leakage is still going so 5000 transistor leakage i don't care it's okay power consumption i don't care but 1 million transistor leakage current let's say pico ampere one pico ampere of one transistor or even small multiplied by it to one billion so obviously it's a huge concern right another is wire resistance wire resistance what is that wire resistance is when the transistor is on so yesterday i just if you can recall the electron will flow travel from source to drain i made a picture yesterday yes, so sir. even let's say i have a simple wire in my hand that we put on the breadboard and when we say that the current flows through that wire it basically the flow of electrons and what is that wire made of copper whatever it is but it acts as a resistor so it has certain resistance right yeah so that channel when the transistor is on i have explained and taught you yesterday underneath the oxide the electrons will come up and it will create some channel from the p type semiconductor the area beneath the oxide will become n type so the source is n type drain is n type and in between area now has become n type so it's became that particular chain becomes n type semiconductor so the current will flow so that path will have some resistance it's just like a wire i'm holding from two ends so that resistance of all these transistors will be a concern so if there is a resistance what is the worry it may act as you know one worry is that the flow of current is reduced so that power wastage will happen if i have a resistance it means i have a ir drop when there is a resistance i have a power consumption current is flowing through the resistor what is the power uh, what is the relation between uh, resistance and the power p p is equal to ir V is equal to I R and uh, I square R. Yeah, P is equal to I square R. So I have a power consumption when there is a resistance. Okay. Resistance. So yeah. yeah. So this is all will happen. Now FinFET is another technology that is getting power attention. So instead of CMOS, people are moving to FinFET. But we are not going to talk about right now. We'll cover it if it is in the syllabus. Okay, so look at this graph now. What it says in 1970, I have a feature size on the Y scale and X size if I go to 2015. I started with 10 micrometer. That's the transistor size. I was able with this technology to pack about 5,000 to 10,000 transistor in a given chip. I realized 8086 microprocessor. I went to market and I bought it for few cents. Then as the year progressed, I am now in 2015. So 10 micrometer, 6 micrometer, you see about 30% reduction for every uh, 2 to 3 years gap. And now at 180, 130, 90 and so on, 65, 45. So from 90 nanometer to about 22 nanometer, these are all commercial technologies nowadays. From 130 to 10 micrometer, they are obsolete. Obsolete means? out of date do you see still sees 8086 in the market no. probably no. not 
maybe in the lab to teach students it's just to teach students. students and all that right so commercial technologies are these two okay okay all right so we are going to stop here uh, for today and we continue for the next class i hope uh, you got what i delivered to you and uh, you have queries you can write me email uh, you can this is my slide again you see so you can write me email or you can uh, tell uh, send a message or something like that and uh, ask your queries is it clear yes sir sir one query so uh. in the last uh, slide uh. Yeah, here. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, somebody said that you know most most life is going to fail. So, if you think currently we are using maybe uh, maybe six nanometer or uh, three nanometer is the latest technology. So also it cannot be less than uh, 0.1 nanometer. So in maybe in few years, so we may reach like one nanometer. So then, after that, it should get fine, no sir, most law. Yeah, like I said, uh, there was a prediction that it's not gonna sustain that law prophecy, self-declared prophecy, that continued for about three decades. Yeah, and then, like let, yeah. let's say a decade ago, scientists and engineers they said, no, it's not gonna continue for the scaling law will not apply anymore because enormous challenges are there. towards scale so uh, but now material scientists engineers they are coming up regularly with the innovations so again this fear and worry and concern was uh, put off and people are strongly aggressively going towards scaling with performance optimization and they are now continuously again continuously saying we are going to sustain this law for at least another decade but yes okay. it's a, it's a is is a matter to be seen how long uh, okay sir and also the one which i said right for you know can transistor can be smaller than heart i'm not sure the one which i stated is right or wrong could you please tell me that the right answer yeah the answer is no yeah like i had that i got like uh, explanation yeah because it is made out of atom atoms only right it has a feature yeah. of silicon atoms and of course so yeah but there therefore that nanotechnology they are uh, talking about quantum and all these things what is quantum sir quantum is uh, again they are playing with this uh, uh, atomic theory there are oh. states uh, when we talk about the uh, structure of an atoms it has a lattice structure and they have their states and they are trying to use those states to be used uh, for computing for sensing etc okay sir okay thank you So I stop here okay see you next time Yeah thank you so much sir. thank you